Hi guys, and welcome back to my stitchery. If you don't know me already, I'm Shiardia. In the, today's video, I wanted to share with you a quick trick to keeping those big pattern pieces from getting completely unruly and making an envelope just for those, as well as a couple things that happened this week for our sewing journey. So I'll see you after past Chishi gives you that quick tip and I'll be back. So the first things you're gonna need are some poster paper, a clear page protector, or in my case, I was using a card protector, some tape, staples, and of course the stapler, a hole punch, ribbon or pipe cleaner, and of course your pattern pieces. Now on to the instructions. I'm gonna put my pattern pieces away and because I'm using a kind of very stiff paper for my pattern pieces, um, it's harder to fold into smaller envelopes and I don't want to burst one of my regular manila envelopes. So instead of what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some poster paper, I'm going to fold it over the entire thing like this. I'm just going to staple the edges because then at least I can have a clean place to put my stuff and then this can easily fit in with my other pattern pieces. Uh, I can put the picture, ha, the pictures. On the front here, this is just my picture of the envelope for the inspiration, pictures of the instructions so that at least I have a clue. I mean, they're not the greatest photos, but they give me enough of a clue that I know what I'm doing because I've done this before at least twice. Um, this I've got to change because there's actually now four pieces and this is a uh, this is the knee length number and I'm going to add the number when I finish the trim. So this is the knee length trim width, which is the back of the skirt. Uh, it doesn't include the front of the skirt because that trim is going to be added on after. Um, and I'm going to add in whatever the length of this is now. I believe it should be very close to this. And then I want to measure what this is at the bottom when I'm finished. Because it will be a little different because my trim is going to be a little different. I'm just going to tape that on the front th right there. And that way I have my pattern and it's safe. I know what's in it and this can go in the bin. So since past she, she didn't exactly explain it, I'm gonna show you with a piece of paper since all of my cardstock or poster paper is kind of run out and I don't have time to go get any more, but I will be getting more when I do my next pattern. So I fold on my poster paper or whatever kind of paper you're using and I usually fold it the long way. That way I have a big opening to put in all of my pattern pieces. Then I just take up these sides and I staple them shut. Usually on poster paper you want significantly more than that, but since this is just the small version, we'll go with it. Okay, nice, easy, keeps all the pieces. Now, if you have a bunch of little pieces and you're worried about them coming through the edges, I would say go in with some tape. And I mean, for big poster paper, I would say use a big roll of tape, but this little tape will do too and then just put those on the edges. Obviously you would seal it all the way to the bottom and to the top if you really wanted to make sure little pieces weren't gonna come out. Okay, then you just take your hole punch up here near the top, two, three times, depending on how many pieces you have really. Or if you want to hole punch away all the way across, you go right ahead and seal it up. I use pipe cleaner instead of ribbon since pipe cleaner will hold its shape. And once it's twist it up, it has a tendency to stay even if you forget about it and don't immediately tie that knot. So it's all done and done. Now, as for the pocket protectors, which this would be a page protector, which was just a little clear plastic page protector. You can get them usually at the dollar store, Walmart, Staples, you name it. Um, these card versions are just for storing um, usually like board cards or I think some people use them for hockey cards and stuff. Here I have some French Monopoly cards in my pocket and uh, they just go in there, right? 
So these ones, you can also cut these. So if you only need like one pocket or two pockets, you can cut these down and those stay useful the entire time. And then I would just tape this down to, we'll pretend this is my big envelope. I would tape it down to my big envelope or I would cut this down. I would go along these perforated edge. If you only need uh, one or two of them, you're gonna have to sacrifice a pocket in order to get them. You can get two individual ones or you can take off this top row. This top row makes it a lot easier. So you can just take them off in threes. So if you really don't need a lot of labels, there you go. Otherwise, just use one of these page protectors and put in a piece of paper, write all your information on it and you're good to go. You can even put the old envelope in this big one. Uh, especially if you're just remaking an envelope to make it bigger. And then that's it. It's nice and easy. And mine looks like this. And I just keep mine underneath my desk right now. It is going to get its own bin. And there you go, guys. That's how you make a giant pattern folder. See you later. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back. So I hope that helped. I know it helps me to kind of keep at least some of my <laughs> patterns from getting completely unruly. I learned the trick back when I was in junior high school or something, and it was literally just a portfolio for keeping all of our extra large projects in. So if you've got kids and they keep giving you all those wonderful coloring pages, that is the perfect kind of thing. And then you all have them all in one place, and if you have multiple kids, you can make multiple folders. <laughs> Otherwise, for those of us who are just at home with our pattern pieces, well, at least we have somewhere we can keep the really big ones. Now, on to the sewing journey. So, I have, yet again, made this dress, which is now called the walkaway dress. I found it, and I'm very happy. I really enjoy it. I love it as this goose one. Uh, but I'm doing it again in a much warmer set so that it goes all the way to the floor so that my ankles are covered because man is it cold in Canada. So I have been working on it, I promise. Uh, the only thing is is that I have to baste in all of my bias tape because the material that I have chosen to make my bias tape out of is suede. And if you've ever worked with suede, you know it doesn't really iron the best. So I can't put any creases in it, so I can't mark out any of my widths. So I would either have to draw on my widths or baste my widths in. So for me, I have decided to hand baste my bias tape in so that I have that marking of that half inch where it's supposed to be. I'm hoping that I can do it on my sewing machine, but I'm not entirely certain. I've had some trouble going through the number of thicknesses that this layer, or that these four or five layers of fabric really are, because it's a knit, because it's a plaid, because it's satin, it's a whole bunch of difference. And I'm not gonna knock my sewing machine. My sewing machine has been doing wonderfully, but it is starting to get a little fussy about more than five layers. So. Now that I'm moving on to suede, I guess I'm gonna kinda have to do some hand stitching and some machine stitching. Whatever I can save by sewing by machine, I will. But for now, I'm pretty much stuck on hand sewing my miles of bias tape in. So I will be doing that and I will probably be doing that on my couch so I won't be filming nearly as often, just as a heads up. Now, I have been working diligently on making a pattern for the King Giadora, <laughs> my King G costume for my son, and I have managed to get everything cut out and here's hoping that when I put it all together it comes out the way I want it to. So far this is just the first mock-up, but I hope that it's the only mock-up because I'd like to just be able to give it to him, but you never know. So that's. All that I've gotten done on that, I have all the pieces cut out and that's it. As for the D20, I have gotten a couple of things done. I have managed a few more triangles. I have figured out several different ways that the pockets can go in. But going forward from now, a lot of this is going to end up being hand sewing. Because a lot of the finishing details, inserting the pockets, making sure that everything lines up, 
is going to be a lot of hand finishing. So this is going to take a while and I won't be recording nearly as much of it. I will take a couple of pictures from here and there to so that you guys can see what's coming up as I make it. And I'll show you what I've got done now. But that's pretty much everything. This week has not been super, super exciting on the sewing journey, but I have really enjoyed getting through my wardrobe and really making a difference in just how much clothing I have. And of course, I will be donating that clothing to a recycling. So I have my sister who has reignited threads. She makes fashion clothing into even better fashion and then resells it for people so that they can have uh, new clothing, remade, or really fancy clothing at less cost than going to a normal department store. So if you want to see her, go over at Reignited Threads. I will link the information down in the description somewhere. I hope you'll check them out. I really, really appreciate everybody who has come in, has liked, has subscribed, all of you. Thank you so much for watching my channel and I'll see you next week.